There are lots of fans of the sport. There is a big cycling history here and it's passion that runs deep. We feel very, very proud of this sport. We don't just applaud the winner or if the rider is a local one. We also applaud the rider who comes in last and those who aren't from around here. Well, I like riders that fight, that give everything in the race. Even if they don't win, they push themselves, try different tactics. They are the riders that connect with the public. The Basque Country, synonymous with great riding and with a history of producing some of the sport's biggest names. The Vuelta al País Vasco is the highlight of cycling in the region, an annual six-day stage race offering challenging roads and some of the sport's most knowledgeable and passionate fans who love to watch riders with fire in their belly. Muchos de los ciclistas... Lots of the cyclists that have great charisma are riders that maybe don't have the best palmares, but they have guts, honour and are up for a fight. It's exactly like in football. There you can't compete with the quality of the biggest, richest clubs, but you can match them for bravery and all other things. One rider who epitomises that fighting spirit and is therefore held in great affection is Amit Churuka. The 32-year-old Cajarural climber, born and bred in the Basque province of Guipúzcoa, drew inspiration from riding and spectating on these roads. As a little boy, I used to go and watch the race that finishes in Arate. I live 10 kilometers from Arate. Every year, I'd go and see my idols like Kiapuchi, Chochili and Indurain. So it was very special. And being able to compete myself in this race fills me with joy. The era that inspired Churuca was a high point for cycling in Spain and within the Basque regions. In the mid-1990s, Banesto, Once and Kelme Pro teams were bankrolled by Spain's blue-chip brands, drawn to the sport by the success of Miguel Indurain and Abraham Olano, who both hailed from the north. Nearly all Spanish pros raced in the Basque regions as amateurs, and dozens of top pros emerged to win Europe's biggest races. Euskadi could boast its own team, created in 1994 with local backing and using only riders with close links to the Basque country. Backed by Basque telecommunications firm Euskaltel, it was a vivid and successful presence on the world tour. Riders such as Ivan Mayo, Roberto Laiseca and Joseba Beloki, to name just a few, challenged at Grand Tours supported by their iconic orange wave of fans. But the financial difficulty that cycling in the region is having to overcome is as steep as the gradient of that infamous Wall of Aia climb featured on this year's race. The Euskaltel Euskadi team imploded two years ago because of lack of sponsorship, a body blow to cycling in the region. Now Moby Star is the last Spanish team left on the world tour. Euskaltel, which was always our main point of reference, was always, so to speak, supported by the world of politics. The political institutions always backed them. But now we see how the world tour is full of important companies, big sponsors, teams backed by global industry. Public money no longer has the millions of euros that it takes to back a world tour team. But I think places like the Basque Country need a focal point, either with a foreign sponsor or a local one, but they do need it to be something created here. The challenge now is to rebuild, and it must be done from the grassroots. The amateur scene remains vibrant, with clubs like the Club Ciclista Eibarres working tirelessly as a feeder system for the next generation of Basque riders. The club organises the biggest amateur race in the region, La Balenciaga. Past winners include triple world champion Oscar Freire and Joaquim Rodriguez. What I'm seeing at the moment in Euskadi, in particular among the junior and youth riders, is that there are still people motivated and dedicated to racing. We are organising races. We organise five, two for juniors, two at youth level, and one for elite and under 23s. We develop riders and help them along. Riders like Royo Jorillo, Astaloa, world champions. And while I forget how many have come through here. Also working at developmental level is Miguel Madariaga, the man who created the Euskadi team over two decades ago and who now runs a cycling foundation. His fear is that promising riders will have a harder time punching their way into the elite peloton. 
se necesita en Euskadi uno... En Euskadi, we need one or two pro-continental teams, so these kids have a future. It's not just us. There are other organizations that are doing good work. But the problem is that those organizations need to realize that something needs to be done so these riders have somewhere to go. Currently, the closest local option available to Basque riders aiming for the professional ranks is Caja Rural Seguros, operating out of Pamplona in Navarra, a pro-continental team with a major presence in the local races. I think Caja Rural, bit by bit, is leading the way and is doing something very positive and taking advantage of the great racing you have here, like this race, the San Sebastián Classic, and the Vuelta a España. To be present means you have publicity, but Caja Rural, as a bank, needs an ally if they want to make that step up to the world tour. The path is there, but I think it's a journey they're achieving bit by bit and doing what they can to get there. Cycling in the Basque country finds itself at a crossroads. The finances to nurture the next generation are sorely lacking, but the talent, environment and passion all remain. It's these factors that give a sense of hope to those who love the sport in this part of the world. The Basque people are very tough sort of people, it's a tough terrain, and anyone that uh, can make it here in the Basque country can, is, is, a, is a fantastic bike riding. The amateur cycling here is fantastic, certainly riding around in the Basque country is, is great, and uh, I tend to think that the, uh, the next generation of bar cyclists is, is well on its way.